Hello, Salam. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Hatem Zaglou. Um, this is part two of a conversation with one of the most innovative, uh, inspiring uh, technologists, entrepreneurs that I know. And uh, if you haven't uh, heard or seen part one of the conversation, please go and do that before you jump into part two. Uh, because in part one, we learned a little bit about the history and, and how uh, Dr. Hatem has been you know, uh, part of the foundation of wireless uh, technology as we know it today, as well as you know the success stories um, and the great success he's had with two wireless companies that he's been a part of and a founder of, Cellock, as well as Wildland. Cellock, you know, people had an opportunity to buy it at a penny, literally, and uh, reached a peak of $84. Uh, Wyland, uh, people got in at 50 cents. Uh, the IPO was at 250, and it hit a high of 94 uh, dollars. And so, remarkable success stories. One of the best performing companies on the TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange, during their times. Um, so, welcome back, uh, Dr. Hatem, to part two of our conversation. Thank you for having me. And, uh, and in this part, you know, I really want to get into the specifics of um, your new venture. And, you, had, uh, you know, you hinted in the previous part one that, uh, you know, you took a little bit of time out of the industry. Um, you know, you, you, I guess I'm in retirement, but you can't keep a good man in retirement. You, know, you can't keep a genius sitting in retirement and, and you bring a wealth of experience and expertise to telecom and wireless. And your new venture innovation is all about 6G. And, uh, and if, uh, you know, I see on your website, you know, you are aiming to reconstruct the lives of billions of people by reshaping telecom and the world through a new 6G network. Um, and, and I will let you carry on and explain to us, you know, how, what that is and, and how it works. Um, Great. Um, you know, in, in simple words, the telecommunications network, meaning the, uh, you know, mobile or the telephone network has not changed in concept since 1974 with the introduction of electronic switches. Basically, switches got miniaturized. Before that, uh, switches were all mechanical. You know, uh, yes, yes. they became electronic in, 1970, in the 70s. And, you know, uh, till this day, if you want to make a phone call, you whether you pick up a handset or you dial numbers on your mobile, in both cases, the first thing that happens is it goes to a mobile switching office or to a central office. It looks at the number, decides where to send that call. Now, that mobile switching office or the central office is a multi-million dollar venture. Now, most half the population of the world cannot afford that central office. And the reason for it is the sparse population. You go in Africa, you know, uh, most towns are 15,000 people and they're 20, 30 kilometers away from the next town. Each of those towns must have a central office. And that way it you know, becomes prohibitively expensive. And what, uh, you know, the big companies have decided for the last hundred years is tough luck. They don't get service. So our view is why not, you know, reduce the price, reduce the cost of the network. How do we do that in two ways? The access part is through in, in, in our, you know, model, uh, mesh Wi-Fi. Now it can be mesh anything. It could be mesh LTE. It could be mesh uh, you know, uh, GSM, if one, you know, the mesh concept is that the little router of Wi-Fi, half the time, it's really not half the time because what we do is we make almost two routers. So it spends half its resources talking to other routers in the neighborhood and half its resources talking to the users around it. In talking to the other routers, it spreads the internet. In talking okay. to the users, it gives them access. That way, you know, we can cover an area one kilometer by one kilometer with, um, you know, something like 36 of these routers. And uh, basically, you know, at the cost of what, maybe maximum, uh, some of these routers can be for $70 or so. So for a maximum of about $3,000, 
Then what do we do about the central office? We, the central office is made of computers and switches. So for these 36 nodes, we only need uh, a small switch, okay. $200 to $1,000, a gateway to protect the network. And then we, the, 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 the key here is we add a server that's a blockchain server. This is what okay. blockchain was made for, decentralizing central. Absolutely. So Absolutely. We, we decentralize the central office. So instead of having a million dollar central office, we have brought it down to maybe a thousand dollar computer. So if you added all the numbers I talked about, for $5,000, I can do the infrastructure of these 15,000 people compared to before a million dollars. So I can bring with this yeah. technology communications anywhere in the world and at, a, at relatively speaking high speeds, you know, right. like uh, this Wi-Fi is, you know, I'm sharing between these people, maybe two links, each 1.3 gigabits per second. So I'm sharing about yeah. three gigabits per second between 15,000 users at any one time, there's only 1,000 of them active. I'm getting users up to a, a, a meg or two megs per second, which is phenomenal speeds to start with. Yes. Um, now, the truth is, of course, where I will be limited is with access to the international internet, which is mostly going to be in the beginning via satellites until we get a, be a better terrestrial yes. network. So okay. that's really the concept in all simplicity. We think okay. that by bringing communications to Africa, communications that these countries will own, they will own their infrastructure, they will own their data, which is a key element in, uh, in everything these days. The war is, the next war is not yes. about water or, you know, it's about data. So, you know, the, we will give these countries access to their data, control of their data, and we're working with the countries. We go in from the door, we, you know, we, uh, in, in, we're currently in Chad, and we got a license from the government to be a national okay. operator, and we are, you know, giving them lawful interception and everything that the phone company needs to give. Yes. And uh, now, so it's essentially the decentralization of the telecom network and, and being able to... Uh, uh, then be able to uh, scale and roll that out much uh, at a lower cost and at a quicker, um, I would expect a quicker delivery in terms of uh, the mesh network. Now, is uh, you, you said that, uh, you know, the network, would it kind of be like um, a wide area local network, the mesh network, or would it be able to connect one city to another and then eventually interlink the whole country? Well, the, 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 the interlinking is really through the blockchain. Okay. You know, so the blockchain, well, they're on the internet, so they're connected. Yes. Then the next level, they, their data and their information is connected via the blockchain. So that way they're fully connected whether from a billing point of view or from, you know, security point of view, if the government wants to know who's calling whom and, you know, yes. if whatever they have to do, recording calls or monitoring chats or whatever, you know, whatever governments have to do to, to yes. maintain the security of their people, you know, uh, we, we provide all that just like a, an average operator. Yes. You know, okay. the one other very important concept that uh, you, you, you see the drift here, at, at $5,000, this is an opportunity for a tribe's leader, for a, you know, a leader in a, in a village to buy it himself and be part of the network. And if you get the overall drift, I am sure within five years, all the world will be on this technology, meaning people that have hotspots in anywhere in the world, in the US or in Europe, will just put a blockchain computer at the end of this uh, hotspot and be part of this international network. They'll get share of an, an international revenue. So it is a revolution in the communications network itself. It's a, 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 a fundamental rebuilding of the network. It does not affect the revenue of the big operators. To the contrary, we are making a bigger demand for data. And accordingly, what we want is the operator will have fewer clients, but with a bigger revenue. Okay. Because his client will be a small operator himself. 
Yes. Okay. So instead of uh, you know having a thousand clients each taking two three megabits per second, he will have twenty clients each taking three five gigabits per second, which is a much better relationship. Yeah, yeah. You yes. know where they should be. They should not be in the business of answering a phone call. I just uh, lost my call. I want my thirty p back, thirteen yes, pence yes. back. You know. Yes. Yes. And so, so the blockchain, um, and again, is this a private blockchain? Is this uh, built on another foundation or is it uh, a private blockchain that uh, you yourself are building? Yeah, we, uh, and we already built, the whole network is okay. up and running now. Um, okay. we, so we wrote the blockchain from scratch because blockchains are, uh, you know, a new beast and, yeah. and it literally is a beast. Um, you don't know who has a backdoor on things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. The one who first launched the network could easily put a backdoor on every uh, account on the network. Uh, don't ever think there's anything anonymous in the world. Uh, when they call it anonymous, that's when you should worry, you know. Um, so, uh, so it's not built on Ethereum, it is built on your own uh, blockchain. And okay, Absolutely, right. yeah. So we built on our own blockchain when we made it uh, private and permissioned. So meaning okay. we need to know who's loading the, uh, who's part of this network and there will be no your client. There's nothing in communications anonymous. We can't have, uh, you know, part of, the op part of the operator. We don't know who he is. He's just providing service. We can't yeah. have that. Okay. And, uh, and, and for people that may not be familiar with blockchain, it's essentially um, a decentralized uh, database um, and uh, immutable uh, record keeping. And that means that it's, uh, you know, cannot be um, uh, compromised from that aspect and, and can be made either permission uh, based or open. And uh, so, and, and that is the future of um, basically a data uh, management and, uh, and you know building systems that don't need that central uh, control or central intermediary like the, you know Dr. Adam you said that you don't need to actually set up a you don't need to spend a million dollars to build a, a central exchange for a better word right mm -hmm. uh, the, or a data center yeah or data center right and uh, so now uh, give us a little bit um, uh, in this uh, the company was launched in 2016 I believe uh, innovation yes. that is leading this uh, initiative and platform. Have you ran some successful pilots of the program uh, in parts of the world? Absolutely. So we have a permanent pilot in Egypt, in uh, in, a, in a compound in Egypt. We have run. We've done demos uh, in many many countries in the world. We've okay. been to Norway, to Paris, to Tunis. We. Uh, in the Emirates, uh, in Bangladesh, and the biggest demo we did was in Pakistan. So okay. we did a city in Pakistan, we uh, set up the whole city and proved that we can get in every home and, you know, provide over one megabit per second per link. And uh, okay. we did a very, uh, in my opinion, a very good job uh, of uh, showing the, the mesh Wi-Fi. Uh, and as I said, we now have the license in Chad and we're ready to launch. We hope to launch by mid-August. Okay, no, that's really good, and 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 I think Africa is uh, the, the last frontier market, and uh, and there is a hugely underserved um, um, group of people. And in, in your research, how many people do you think um, are underserved or not connected um, and don't have access to internet in Africa? It's a very sad uh, situation. Half the world, half the population mm -hmm. of the world, never saw the internet. Three and a half billion people right now have not seen the internet, 860 million of them in Africa. And wow. it happens to be concentrated around the equator. So that's why we say we like to call ourselves the operator of the equator, okay. you know? Yes. And uh, that's, a, but you have to remember, with communications comes a lot of things. They don't have money transfer systems. In most of Africa, you know, they give two envelopes to the bus driver, one with the name of the person that, you know, will pick the, the envelope at the end of the trip, and one envelope for the driver himself, you know, and that's how they transfer money in most of Africa. Mm -hmm. They do it also over uh, mobile, you know, just with a simple SMS, and uh, it's a very poor system, and, uh, you know, they charge them 10% for that. It's very wow. unfortunate. Yes. You know, so they need communications and they need to join the 20th century. 
you know, yes. first, and then we'll take them to the 21st, uh, hopefully by leapfrogging. Uh, these countries have a lot of resources, and if they know that the diamond in their hand sells in Europe for $2 million, you know, they'll get their share of the money. But yes. right now they think it's a $200 is a, is a beautiful price. Yes, yeah. No, no, that's a great point. And, and uh, you know, in in Africa, you know, even with financial technology, you mentioned, uh, you know, there's, there's a hit, but you cannot implement any of those solutions if you don't have good and reliable internet, yeah. right? Uh, and you know, uh, so that is other sides point. is education. You know, yes. many of these countries never saw many of these villages I'm talking about never saw education. Uh, there is a country in Africa, without naming countries, only has one surgeon in the whole country. Oh, you know, okay. uh, yeah. you know, we need this. We need it very badly. Okay. You know, and yes. uh, there is a lot of money to be made, but you can make it. You know, it's one cent at a time. You don't need to yes, make yes. it a hundred dollars at a time. Exactly. You know, and uh, there's a lot of money to be made for and with these people. Yes. You know, like uh, it, it's not just a pure. Uh, it's not a charity. It's a, it's a very sound business, but you know, it will definitely help uh, mankind. Yes, and, and and that's what uh, you know really gets me excited about uh, you know innovation and bringing solutions to market that. Not, uh, that may impact and improve the lives of people and provide a, a great opportunity for investors uh, to participate and, and help create that impact. You know, an impact investing and uh, is a huge area and that's something that I'm very passionate about. Um, and in terms of the, the example of the project in Chad, um, now Chad has about, I think, a population of 15 million. And right. how long do you think it would take uh, for, uh, your network or the, the 6G network to be able to provide coverage uh, to the whole country and the population? We're anticipating in three years because uh, if we had to do it ourselves, it could take longer. But mm -hmm. as we uh, anticipate and we've talked already to tribe leaders and so on, they will take it themselves and they will launch it themselves once we show them how it's done in a few, you know, villages they will then you know propagate it themselves so relying on that uh, i believe in less than three years would have all of chat covered now we plan to be in a country every two months so after chat there is niger and then uh, we already have relationships in nigeria and cameroon uh, like you know partner companies of ours already have the licenses there um, so then once it stabilizes, we'll, uh, we'll go in Eritrea. Eritrea has only 1% of the population on the internet. Wow. Yeah, it's very sad. Okay, yes. And uh, no, it's, uh, I, and, the, and the funding requirement, because one of the things I do want to share with our audience is that, uh, you know, we've been working with um, uh, Dr. Hatham and I think it's a great project and we want to introduce investors and strategic partners, value add investors, strategic investors, um, you know, that not only believe in, you know, providing, uh, you know, people better lives in Africa, but being able to be part of this, uh, you know, I think this is um, a game changer, you know, and again, like, uh, you know, Wyland or, you know, if you go back 30 years, you know, they didn't believe you in the beginning, you know, you, you, you know, you, you went out to AT&T and all these uh, large uh, organizations and, and, and large corporates, you know, they slow, uh, they move like the Titanic, you know, very slow to t turn course and they take long time. But now with, um, you know, a new digital decentralized world, you know, there's no need for us to necessarily be waiting for corporates to back us. You know, we should be able to build a community uh, of champions who support innovation and impact. Um, so with this, uh, you know, the, um, what is your funding requirement for, I guess, the first project and then moving forward, um, how do you see that rolling out and what type of investors are you really interested to speak with? Uh, you know, to start with, uh, you know, if we look at, of course, covering the entire equator, that's a big sum of money, but yeah. what we want to do is take a step at a time. And the step would be a reasonable step in chat, for example, would be $300,000. Uh, that would get us, uh, you know, not less than 15, maybe, or, uh, you know, uh, I'd say 12, uh, okay. you know, of those uh, what are called cities, you know, going. And um, 
with that, we, we could uh, easily, easily provide those investors with, you know, good returns on their money, as well as return their money if they, if that's a preferred uh, mode, um, you know, and with that, uh, so we need 300,000 chunks, I would say, you know, to, to move and, 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 and expand. Uh, Chad in total would need about $50 million to cover the whole country. But of course, we're cherry picking. So, yeah. you know, first, uh, like everybody else, of course, yeah. I mean, when we put the first network with the first 300,000, we'll take the, the most lucrative markets and we'll, you know, go from there. Yeah. But uh, the, the profits from a network is, you know, almost ye yearly twice as much as the entire investment. So it's a, it's a very okay. good business. Yes. And uh, the other thing is we're also considering alternative uh, funding strategies. So, um, you know, we're looking at not just only equity investors, but, uh, you know, revenue sharing agreements, uh, which are, are a great way for um, investors to participate and, uh, and you know, generate uh, participate in the income stream. Because one of the nice things is it's a very uh, high cash flow business. Once the infrastructure is there, um, you literally have uh, a license to print money because every time people are using the services, you know, a small, like you said, cents are being shared, but those cents or pence add up over time and exactly. become a large sum um, for investors. Absolutely. And uh, no, that's great. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hatam, for sharing that. And, uh, and we'll have the, the links available and, and people can then learn a little bit more about innovation and some of the work that you're doing in the description below. And um, now to wrap off our conversation regarding 6D and, and business, you know, we did a quick rapid fire of about five questions in part one. And I'd like to do something similar for part two to close it off. And, uh, but maybe focus a little bit more on the tech side, you know, because, you know, I'm a big uh, tech investor. I'm not a technologist, you know, I'm kind of the numbers guy that comes in and, and tries to see where the value is and where the gaps are. Um, so let, let's focus on, on tech for our rapid fire uh, in part two. Uh, so my first question for you, Dr. Hatham, is um, what do you see being um, the most uh, impactful technology in, in the next 10 years, blockchain or AI? Um, I, I think uh, blockchain in the next 10 years. In the next 10 years. You know, uh, like it's it, it's the um, I call it the fourth round or the fourth yes. phase of computing. Yes. Okay, great. And um, beyond uh, 6G uh, and and 5G, you know, who do you think in in 10 years? What kind of speeds do you think we could potentially be seeing in terms of data? And why? No, I. I, you know, I, I think there is future in uh, photonics, you know, and photonics in uh, wireless photonics. Um, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, with Li-Fi, light fidelity, yeah. you know, uh, every 10 years, we get a, a wave of uh, photonics guys who say, oh, this photonics is going to replace wireless, you know, and it's going to be the next thing. If they put photonics where it belongs, you know, for high speed, you know, uh, ventures, this would be a very good thing. So I think, you know, we're gonna get to very high speeds for some applications. Okay. And um, do you think we will uh, have been living on, on Mars in the next 20 to 30 years, like Elon is envisioning, Elon Musk? Uh, Elon is a very interesting guy, of course. And, uh, you know, uh, if you ever bet he's wrong, you know, you're going to lose. So, yes, yeah. <laughs> no, he's, so and, he's going to make a colony on Mars one way or another, you know. Okay. Uh, but living is a different thing, you know, yes, like okay. uh, to have life and an enjoyable life and, and yes. so on. Uh, you know, I suspect uh, that's more yes. sci-fi than, than reality. Okay. okay. And... Um, do you think uh, in terms of energy sources, do you think we will discover uh, better and, and with oil and gas and, you know, the, the, the challenges, um, do you think that we will be able to replace oil and, uh, conventional oil in the next 10 to 20 years? I, I think there are many. Yeah. So the answer is yes. The simple answer okay. is yes. Good. And last question, maybe not too technical. Um, 
what uh, what's your favorite card these days? Because I know you, uh, I, I used to like the uh, you know you used to be a big fan of cards. I remember the Z three I think you used to have uh, you know, uh, and then in the Porsche. Uh, what, what's your favorite card these days? Or I've actually interestingly I've always been a simple guy. So these days I drive <laughs> an Nissan Qashqai. Or, you know, ah, okay. uh, but uh, family generally pushes me to. <laughs> <laughs> upgrade and yes, yes. Uh, yes. Have you have you driven a Tesla? What do you think of the Tesla S uh, model? Or? Oh, beautiful! I've, I've beautiful been in cars. them many times. Uh, yes, beautiful yes. cars, of course. Uh, cars, Elon yes, does yes. great job uh, on his yes. work. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, we're not endorsing Tesla. You know, I'm not a shareholder at this time. It's moved up so quickly, but I uh, know it's it's phenomenal um, work, uh, Tesla. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hatton, for sharing your your experiences and the insights on, on 6G and some of the great stuff you're doing in terms of creating real impact in Africa and Asia and, and you know, bringing internet uh, to, the, uh, to the rest of the, the 3 billion or so people you know, that don't have access to reliable internet. Um, and we look forward to maybe catching up with you in a few weeks or a month to, to see the progress and um, as you start rolling out uh, you know, in Chad and other parts of Africa. Thank you very much, Sahil, and good luck with your ventures. Thank you so much, Dr. Hatem. Pleasure. Thank you.